welcome back to the Heater Dynasty podcast, which is now going to be changed to another name of like Battle of the East Coast podcast or something stupid. Mark and I haven't decided yet. Um, <laughs> but anyway, this is uh, this is Connor. This is um, our player series continued. So Connor is uh, one of my buddies from up here in the New England area. And uh, without disclosing too much information, we both worked together at one point in a similar location, both got promoted and are now working separately. Um, we work for the government. It's pretty much all there is to it. So if you, tell, if you have to tell you, I'll have to kill you. So. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. But welcome in Connor. Uh, oh, and Glad then to be here. here's Mark too. So he's joining as well. <laughs> Hello. But yeah, um, well, so we, it's been a couple of weeks since we've done one of these. Um, because Mark got busy, the holidays mm-hmm. happened, um, Thanksgiving is behind us, Christmas is in front of us, it's, uh, it's a good time to be alive. So uh, <laughs> our first question for you though, Connor, is like, what have you been doing to stay sane during all this crazy pandemic? Uh, well, sane is a very loose term, but uh, <laughs> mostly, mostly work kind of keeps me busy. Um, you know, that's pretty most of my, much of my day, but I do have a dog. So we I spend a lot of time uh, outside with him and try to take him for a walk, play in the yard, um, help out with my parents and big video game guys. So Nintendo uh, Switch, I'm on that pretty much every day and try to read a book every now and then, you know, get to keep the brain flowing. That's right. Yeah. You can't fry it all on the Nintendo Switch, but uh, exactly. I played the Switch like one time. Um, Mark had it and we took it to our brother's wedding. And uh, so I don't have much experience with it, but what, what's your go-to game? Uh, Breath of the Wild, so Zelda. Mm-hmm. So it's, okay. it's more of a childhood memory, playing that on the original uh, Sega and, and all the, all those fun games back then. So. Yeah, no, the, the nostalgia for sure. No, that's exactly. awesome. Um, well, we are a fantasy podcast here. That's our... our not Zelda fantasy, but fantasy football. Um, so switching gears a little bit here. Um, now you're a sports guy. We know this. Um, I can tell by your shirt exactly where you're from. Um, but w- Mark and I grew up in Washington, D.C., as you probably know from conversations you and I have had. But we want, we want to know what is it like to actually be able to cheer for a real fan base? Um, it, it's, it definitely makes, makes, makes watching it more enjoyable. Um, I don't need to in, imbibe in alcohol to enjoy a game. Maybe, maybe a little bit more so this year. Um, well, sure. we won't talk about this year. It's one, one year off. Um, I mean, when I was younger, I didn't really know much about what was going on, you know, before Brady and before the Red Sox won. And obviously the, the Celtics and, uh, Bruins won later when I was in high school. Um, but it's, it's, it's nice to have something to cheer for. Um, and also, you know, to see your rivals lose is, is also a lot of fun. But um, the, early, the early years were tough. I mean, and my, my dad speaks about it when, you know, he didn't see much besides the Celtics really in his lifetime. You know, he saw the Bruins in the early 70s, but that was about it. Uh, so I've been very fortunate. Yeah, no, I, Mark and I were talking about this when we were prepping for this, thinking of questions. And, um, I can't think of a city that's experienced more success in the last decade than, than Boston. Um, I definitely feel like, I mean, New York's had its, its heydays as well. But um, other than that, I, I don't feel like there's any other fan base that's experienced as much condensed as you guys have. Yeah. And it was a domino effect with uh, obviously the Pats winning the first one and they took a year off and then two in a row and then the Red Sox kind of piggybacked off of that. Uh, but then you really didn't see much for about five or six years. And that was the longest, longest drought Boston really had in the last 20 years or so. Five, five years. That's, that's horrible. Yeah, it was tough. The <laughs> tough five years, you know? <laughs> made, made middle school kind of boring. So, yeah. You know. well, middle school sucks anyway. So it's fine. <laughs> oh, so, so are the Patriots your, main one or do, are you more um I, I mean, I'll fan? watch I'll watch them I mean but I'm more of a hockey guy okay 
which is kind of sacrilegious being on a, a fantasy football league, I know, but well, um, fantasy hockey is not as much fun. So that's <laughs> right. right. <laughs> it's, if you ever play it, it's, it's actually really hard. So I know for, for myself with hockey, it was something I just came into the zone as the Capitals were getting good. We had that one awesome streak here, you know, <laughs> two years ago, a year ago. And so that's when I got into it. And I feel like, I feel like it's pretty much unquestioned, at least in my mind, it's the most athletic sport. Like there's just, you're doing so many things all at once. I really feel like those guys are the, the freaks. Yeah, yeah no, it's, it's crazy. And it's the environment, especially in the playoffs, is second to none. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Um, so what, what do you think is worse, fantasy hockey or fantasy baseball? Oof. Um... Well, I think baseball, just because of, they can't keep track of 162 games, it's impossible. You know, you, you might might be invested for like the first month, two months, and then I, I usually would forget. So I stopped I stopped doing baseball about five, six years ago. Just couldn't do it. I was going to so, say, I've never actually tried either. I, fantasy football is literally all I've done. Um, so I, I think I'll stick with it. But <laughs> John, it seems to be John working. Staggers. In the league, he uh, he invites me every single year to fantasy baseball until here recently when if I think I officially have said no too many times to him that it was <laughs> it wasn't asked. But I would try and I could never make it to the All Star break, dude. It's because it, it's daily <laughs> and then longer than the actual NFL season. <laughs> too much. No, no, thank you. Um, okay, so what? Um, I'm trying to see what my questions were here. So, so I know you said you're a Bruins fan, but um, I know our interactions when we first met were all regarding football because that's all I care about, and I'm a selfish <laughs> person, so we talk about me. But what was it like to be a part of, like, do you think that the Patriots are more obnoxious than Eagles fans? Or, like, what's your take well, on that? I know there are some Eagles fans in this league, so I'm, I feel like I'm taking a shot, but uh... – Take a uh, shot. They're all they're all take the gloves off. Yeah. Uh, but um I, I mean obviously winning six Super Bowls in twenty years is, is gonna make you make you a target and make you think that our fan base is more obnoxious, but just uh just seeing how they treat, you know, their quarterbacks and they kinda of ran out the guy that won them a Super Bowl and now they're left with Carson Wentz who's had the worst drive off in three years in NFL history. Um, you know, and obviously I'm not going to say anything bad about Brady because he brought all those championships to us, but I'm kind of glad that that error is over and just seeing how, what's going on down in Tampa Bay. But, um, I would honestly say it's, it's pretty close, um, just because of that winning culture that we have here. And I know it's tough to, to see that not being on the inside, I guess. Right. Well, and that's, people are always like, why don't you just cheer for the Patriots? And I was like, I've been here for five years. Can I really jump on this bandwagon now? I mean, after this year, I might be able to, but, uh, All right. <laughs> but we uh, might be able to sneak in. Yeah. <laughs> but no, I'm good. I'm good. I'm glad to see Brady gone too. Um, but at the same time, here come my dogs. They come down the stairs. Um, but at the same time, I agree. I think, I think the Patriots fans are more obnoxious, but I think that the Eagles fans are are way worse um because at least the patriots fans have a reason to be obnoxious the eagles fans won at one time and now they think they they own the world <laughs> they think they own the world right? yeah yeah and well we won't talk about that too well, you know, it's, uh... <laughs> yeah. uh, <laughs> we should talk about that though as hard as it's going to be for you because that was the one time we actually watched the game together yeah i was just going to say that yeah. yeah it was uh that was a tough one. I would say that was actually harder to see than the, the two against the Giants, even though the perfect season and everything. Uh, just because, it, you know, it wasn't like the Pats played a bad game. Uh, obviously, Brady bro broke some records in that game, and to lose on a gadget play like that is just a tough pill to swallow. Yeah, no, that was that was a tough game. It was definitely uncomfortable to watch with you because I was like, I wasn't, I didn't really want the Eagles to win either as a as a Washington fan. But at the same time, I also was totally fine with the Patriots losing. But then, like, seeing – so, basically, I was watching the TV and then watching your face, <laughs> watching the TV. And then the game was just kind of over. And, like, I was just like, well, I, 
I guess I'm going to go home now. I'll, I'll see you tomorrow, <laughs> Connor. Um, so, yeah, it was, it was definitely an awkward moment. Um, almost more awkward because none of our other friends showed up. So it ended up just being right. you and me, like, eating all the food, which yeah, was, was totally a, fine. It was a tough look, um, but, you know. <laughs> I guess it, it was better in the long run because they lost. So, I mean, it would have been a little bit more. I guess maybe not, so it wouldn't have been quite as awkward. But, um, yeah, it was it was tough to just to be the two of us. But I tried not to make it so awkward. So, uh, I, didn't, I, don't, I didn't throw anything, at least. No, you didn't throw anything. Yeah, you didn't throw anything. You definitely uh, – you were a great host. Um, so, I, I didn't I come back there. What would you say, Mark? I was going to say, I can't imagine hosting – with my own team involved, <laughs> like, uh, luckily I've never had that dilemma um, in my lifetime, but um, they, uh, you know, keeping it together, enjoying the game, and, like, putting up with people, I, I think that's tough. <laughs> For sure. Um, all right. Let's see here. All right, so coming into fantasy football, what um, have you ever been a part of a dynasty league before? Or is this your first time? This is my first one. Okay, so what what has been your experience, or what was your strategy going into year one? Um, I wouldn't really call it much of a strategy based on the results so far. Um, <laughs> I don't think I really planned as well as I probably should have. Um, I think I just was used to the normal, you know, one year and then reset. Um, I know I, I've kind of gotten, I guess not, I didn't get distracted, but, you know, some of the trades that I've made haven't really worked out in my favor. Um, specifically to you, Eric, uh, I think I made a huge mistake tra trading uh, Terry to you, but uh, it's worked out really well in your favor, obviously. Um, it has. Yeah, um, yeah. To be fair, neither of us knew what he was going to be when we did right. that trade, because that was pre um, his breakout, for sure. Yeah. But. And I, I picked him knowing he was an Ohio State guy because that's the team I root for, college football. So um, that was pretty much the only reason why I took him, knowing what he did in college. Uh, but, yeah, trading him. And then it was – it took a little bit, but it was a couple weeks after we, we did the trade, he started to really take off. And I've been kicking myself ever since. <laughs> Connor, Connor, would you like to trade for Dwayne Haskins or on the top? Uh, no, no, I'll pass on that. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not that big of an Ohio State guy. So. Had to ask. <laughs> I'll wait for Josh Fields, and you know, maybe somehow I'll try to sneak my way into that one. But there you go. There you go. Um, so, would you? Um, what would you have done differently if if you could redo that draft? Um, I guess. I don't know. I guess not being attracted to the same guys that I usually take. So I guess. Like Michael Thomas has been a huge letdown for me this year. Um, in the last four or five weeks, Russell Wilson has struggled to get to even 20 points. Um, but I guess going after more uh, gadget guys, the guys that can be you know more uh, useful in the flex. Uh, but I haven't gotten a huge production from running backs. So running backs, I definitely did not do uh, did a good enough job researching or drafting. Yeah. No. I um. Running backs is definitely the weakest part on my team as well. Um, and that's been a strategy that we've been talking with some of the other players of is uh, in dynasty, which is more important uh, running backs or wide receivers running backs tend to be, you know, bigger point scores, but have a shorter shelf life. Um, so what's more important having that like solid wide receiver you can have in there for five, six years or a really good running back for two to three years. So what what's your take on that? Um, I guess I would I would agree, but I I, I mean that's the the beauty of being able to draft every year, and hopefully you kind of get uh get lucky and draft somebody uh, that you can have in your roster for five, like you said, five six years. I don't think I you know see anybody currently in the wide receiver position outside of maybe Keenan Allen if he stays healthy um, that I currently have, uh, but. I've had a couple of diamond in the roughs that are starting to kind of come in. Uh, Damian Harris and uh, Hines and in Indianapolis have kind of taken off that hopefully they can stay healthy and uh, keep contributing on a big level for me. 
Yeah, no, I think uh, I think Damien Harris definitely could play out for you. Um, definitely if they can get rid of Sonny Michelle and clean up that yeah. backfield a little bit. We um, won't talk that he's also on my roster. Um, that was another <laughs> mistake. I kind of just went off of his big rookie year and thought he was going to, you know, return, you know, return the same favor, but hasn't worked out. But you know, we won't talk about that. <laughs> for sure. Um, so being. I know that this might be your first year in a dynasty or first dynasty league experience, but I know you've done lots of fantasy football. Um, so are there any other particular rules um, that you like in our league that are like maybe a new um, thing, or is there things that you would change if you were the commissioner? Um, I don't think there's anything I would change again, because it is my first time in a dynasty league. Um, I do like the, the way the draft is set up and the you know, compensation picks that you did last year. Um, and, you know, just the trading um, aspect of everything. Um, I don't know. I, I, like I said, it's, it's the first time, like, I've never been in a two QB league, so that's new for me. Um, it's usually just the kind of the standard. I'm, I, I've done fantasy football for about, you know, five, six years. Uh, this is the first time I've been really invested in it, I'll be honest with you. You know, pick the, pick, pick the time to do it, but I, I guess I, I should have been a little bit more prepared for it. Well, the good news is that it seems like the turnover um, rate from year to year is is pretty big. I mean, I'm looking at the – so we're going into week 12, and um, the the guy who completely, like, bottomed out and lost last year looks like he is currently sitting in third place in our – after I did the, the rankings. This is before the, the Wednesday night afternoon football game. Um <laughs> Yeah, right. first, first time in history um so once that plays maybe we'll have slightly different results but it looks right now like ben chapman is somehow in third place um after completely bombing last year um and then our champion last year went full tank mode he is dead last and uh so i i think that even though um teams are set with dynasty I think the the ability just year to year is so much different. Like you look at Mark's roster and he had going into the season, he thought he was loaded with Ezekiel Elliott, Leonard Fournette, Todd Gurley, and uh, Raheem Mostert. Oh, yeah. So which like at the beginning of the year, I was like, oh, that is going to be one tough roster to beat. Well, now Ezekiel Elliott looks like hot garbage. Um which I th- I don't think that's permanent, Mark. I think that is everything to do with Dallas just blowing chunks this year. Well, it's a big thing with Dak being hurt too. That was Dak know. hurt the line, like the line. The is line huge. is decimated. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, having to be that close to Andy Dalton, it's got to have a negative <laughs> effect on you. Um, just in that division to begin with. But. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> just uh, <laughs> just the stink of the NFL uh, NFC. NFC East, um, yeah, for sure. Can you believe, Mark, that Washington's going to win the division? You, you can see that, can't you? I really feel like at this point we're the favorite, and it's almost like it, it's almost – It's going to be more disappointing when we don't get it? Well, I, so I'd be more – I can't decide what I want because if we're a six-win team going into the playoffs, we now get our you know draft pick way inflated because we're a – playoff team so then we have a worse draft pick you know it's possible for us to win it at five and eleven yeah if if other teams lose out um because that would put us at four and two like if the game we win is against philly that would put yeah. us at four and two in the division and we could lose out the rest and, and depending on what the giants do we could we could take the division at five and eleven and have a home game against tom brady and the tampa buck uh tampa bay buccaneers I saw an interesting stat where the, the only two sub-500 teams to be in the playoffs. I know it's Seattle. I think it's Carolina. Like well, the There was one. the New York Giants who won the Super Bowl. I think they were 500, right? They were, were they 8-8? Last... I thought they were 7-9. and nine. But maybe you're right. I don't know. No, I think they were 8-8, eight eight, yeah. Okay. All right. Um, so, but they both won. So, I guess all the teams you just mentioned won their home playoff. Well, Giants won 
Well, the real question is, and I know this is going off script of what we sent you, Connor, so I'm sorry yeah, in advance. All good. All but good. whenever <laughs> I lead these things, this is what happens. Um, but the real question is, whoever's the last man standing with COVID is going to win the Super Bowl, just based on, like, you look at these results of which team is the most disciplined is probably going to be the one that makes it. Um, so, like, knock on wood, Washington's done pretty well so far. The only person we've had that's a positive COVID case is someone that's on the IR all year because he tore his uh, – was it his, his bicep. That's uh, Matt Ioannidis. So, so far – Mark, this is looking promising. I don't know. And by, by what last man standing, it might be just one player standing. Right. <laughs> Kendall Hilton. That's who's going to be standing. Yeah. Right. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, no, that's, that's a hot mess. Um, all right. So let's see here. What else we got? Mark, any questions you have off the bat? So – None in, in particular here, but I did kind of want to talk a little bit more about how the turnover, right, where I was second to last and BC being last in the flip. And so just kind of in general, Connor, when you're looking at your team, where do you see your team in, like, next, like, three years or five years or whatever kind of the territory you, you've come for, like, looking at the outlook in that regard? Um, well, hopefully not in the bottom of the league. Um, right now, I think I'm sitting at, what, 500 after this week against Eric, thankfully yeah. for that. Um, but uh, I just need to draft better and, and get more um, more young talent into my roster. Um, biggest thing is I think quarterback is a glaring issue for me. Uh, but in the next, I'd say, what, two, three, four years, uh, I'd say consistently in the top of top five of the league, if not even higher than that. Uh, it's wishful thinking, you know, we just don't know how things are going and injuries happen and, you know, all that um, taken into account. But yeah, I mean, I would love to love to win the league, uh, league every year, but you know, that's a, with everybody going at it, it's, it's, a, it's a big, big task. I feel like you have a few studs. I feel like you got, like you mentioned Russell Wilson, but like he was like on fire at the beginning right. as up and like michael thomas i don't think <laughs> can't say that was a bad pick <laughs> like you know like no, that, it wasn't but, a bad pick but <laughs> he's just he's kind of let me down this year uh you know getting hurt and then getting into the fight of practice but the last couple of weeks with uh drew being hurt it's obviously hurt his uh his stats yeah jk dobbins there waiting to yep. waiting to join the ranks so. And I know um, the champ wanted to pry him from my from my grips to get Melvin Gordon, but I, I refused. He finally he finally uh, you know settled on Michael Pittman, which I'm kind of kicking myself for trading, but I definitely need the running back help. Uh, but yeah, I was glad that, that I didn't I didn't uh, let him go. I think J.K. is going to be a a force in the next couple of years. Yeah, no, I think I think you made the right choice. And as hard as it is to let Michael Pittman go, um, I think. J.K. Dobbins is going to have a much more illustrious career, even if it's shorter lived for the next couple of seasons. Definitely, I can they... find another Ohio State guy in the draft. Oh yeah, there's there's tons of them. <laughs> yeah, every year there's at least two or three of them that get drafted. So you're good. Um, so last question of the day. Um, I was reading through the notes, Mark, and I saw some of the uh, the highlights you put on there. And the uh, the question I have for you, Connor, is when when can we expect you to um, make another um, really important comment on the, on our sleeper app because uh, Mark was tiling through and it looks like we, we think we've gotten one response out of you in the last two years. <laughs> the most important stat that will be discussed today is that one message and I could not find it to see what it was. And, but I don't know if you remember it all. It may have just been like, yeah, I'll be there or something like that. But <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It was it was so nondescript. I don't remember what it, what it was. So. <laughs> it was profound, whatever it was. <laughs> yeah, I, I know. I definitely have to be more active on that. Um, I know a, a lot of it is like trash talking, and you know they the non-complaint complaints from some some players about tanking and not tanking. Um, 
I definitely have opinions. I just need to be more vocal about it for sure. <laughs> no, it's too funny because I, I know that you're watching. I can see your like little helmet pop up. So I know that you're, <laughs> you're getting the uh, notification. I'm like, hmm, I wonder what Connor's thinking right now. Because uh, I, I, I usually can like verbalize in my mind what you would say in those situations. But one of these times, you're just going to gonna bring out one of those zingers that I'm ready for. No one's gonna be. No one else will be ready for it. But like, you will. Who, who the hell is this guy? <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> just out of just out of left field, just casual, and then I'll just leave, and then you won't hear from me for another two years. So. There, there you go. It's um, <laughs> it's those like you know you don't say much, but when you do, everyone's gonna listen. So right. I I that's my request. Mic. Is it's not a formal complaint by any means, Connor? But one one message here. That's my right. that's my request. At least. All right, I'll, uh, I'll definitely get on that. <laughs> All right. Sounds good. Sounds good. Well, dude, it was, it was fun. Thank you for doing this. I know, uh, I know we need to hang out more often. We're, we're the closest here in this group. Um, but, uh, but it's good to see your face. It's good to hear that business is going well. And uh, yeah, that's, that's really all I got. This was fun. Can you meet you, Connor? Thank you for having me. Nice to meet you too, Mark. Thanks for having me, guys. Absolutely. And, uh, yeah, we will let you know. We have some ideas for the off-season, which uh, we will present later. But we're thinking about doing some sort of Zoom event for the for the end of the year. Maybe some sort awesome. of, like, rewards or um, roasting or something. <laughs> yes, it'll it'll be good. So Get them to get so, the notes ready. All right, that's it. right. Yeah, get your notes ready and uh, <laughs> prepare that one comment. We're, we're ready for it. <laughs> All right, dude. All right, I'll be on it. No worries. <laughs> Sounds good. All right, guys. Until next time. Peace.